Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a precision miter box so you don't need to buy a miter saw. Now, if you already have a miter saw, that's okay. You may still need one of these. I've got a Makita compound sliding miter saw and it's very nice, but it's also very heavy and cumbersome. If I have to go to an installation or a job site, I want to avoid bringing my powered miter saw because A, the truck was full of stuff already. I had tools, I had lumber, all loaded up into the FJ and I had to bring that to the job site and I was trying to get everything there in one trip and I really didn't have room for my miter saw. So I needed a solution for cutting the miters on my trim. That's when I realized I needed a miter box. And it turns out it does a better job than my powered miter saw. So you might ask me, well, what's the big deal with this miter box? Why is it a precision miter box? Well, the miter box itself doesn't make it precise. Part of the reason why it's precise is because I use a seven and one quarter inch blade on my table saw. And by using that blade, I cut a thinner kerf. I also use a Japanese style dual edge pull saw and that in combination with this miter box makes it a precision tool. For zero dollars, you can build one of these and between 20 and 30 dollars, you can buy one of these pull saws. If you're starting out and you're looking at budgeting your power tools, a power miter saw or a compound sliding miter saw is really just a convenience. It's not a necessity for a wood shop when you're just starting out. I've always said that the table saw is a much better purchase. I always find myself doing much finer work on the table saw and really the miter saw is just a convenience. At this stage now we've got our box. It's very simple construction. Just glue and screw basically. A few scraps of three quarter inch plywood. You of course could use solid wood. The next step is really critical is getting your angles correct. Being that this is a 12 inch piece, six inches will get me in the center. So I take my speed square and I mark the center. Now I want to make my angle marks. So that's one angle. And then three inches from this side is where I'll mark the next one. And that leaves me lots of material so this thing doesn't fall apart at some point. I'm going to take this over to the table saw and cut it using my cross cut fence. I get my speed square right up against the fence here. We should be flat up against the fence, flat up against the blade on the inside. The miter box is basically cut and ready for use. A couple of things to note, on my table saw I use a seven and one quarter inch blade that has 40 TPI. The type of saw that I would use on this miter box is a Japanese style dual edge pull cut saw. Now this is a little wider than your typical miter box, but that is so I can do baseboard trim as well. Thank you. 
We've got our sacrificial piece in. Let's give this a test drive. And that is a perfect joint. I don't even have to clamp my workpiece into the miter box. I just hold it down firmly and cut away. It takes a tiny bit more time than using a power saw, of course, but the results are much, much better. This is actually one of those cases where hand tools will win every time and you can't beat the cost. You can help this channel out by donating using this button right over here. It'll help me continue to make and edit these videos for you. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. There are a couple more videos on this side you can watch. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a great day.